So I got to bring this up because uh, I feel like we're going to get lynched by our... Uh, Infest dead. Yeah, by oh, our fans. Oh. So oh, the, good. The I was two, glad you are going to do it. Yeah, the two that I want to bring up... Because J-Dog would be mad. Well, you didn't ask about that. He loves that stuff. Well, I, I love Infest dead as well, but it's, and it's kind of cool to see like... The circle of people that you've worked with always kind of come back around, you know, like with with Dread, I believe, uh, being in, involved in Infest Dead with you. And but I, yeah. we would, lo- I'm sure everyone would love to hear the story of how that came to be. And many people are wondering why there's nothing following it because they all want it, <laughs> just like another <laughs> Edge of Sanity record. Everyone's like, oh, "When's yeah, the next yeah, Edge of Sanity? When's the?" Yeah, but you know, they never like, heard Dan passionately talk about how not pro- <laughs> pro- programming drums and stuff wasn't he didn't like. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm sure this is going to be enlightening, enlightening <laughs> oh, sure. for everyone. But yeah, so Infested yeah. would be a big one. And then I have uh, the personal question because I was such a fan of Diabolical Masquerade for a long time. I would love to hear the evolution of that. And actually, your drumming is really spectacular on um on some of that stuff where i was like man dan's really coming with a double bass on all this stuff man i mean he's you know if you listen to night night work i'm like man he's he's flying so uh yeah that's another story yeah i I start with the infested (laughs) one and i'll try to make it effective you know what, what happened was that i was about to start recording merciless unbound album Oh, cool. And um, I was uh, triggering a lot of kicks at the time. And I had an Atari computer set up with my 16-track machine. So I could actually record the MIDI onto the Atari and make them in time with the drums. They were not would not be 10 milliseconds delayed or whatever right. that Alessis' machine had at the time. And that was a pretty elaborate thing. You had to, to stripe a tape and you have to synchronize shit. And death metal bands and computers was not really working in 93. They were like, what? There's a computer here. What the fuck? You think about Kraftwerk or what? Fuck off, you know? But I was trying to explain that, yeah, but when something missed trigger or we need to to patch up some shit or whatever, this is way easier because here in Cubase, you see these little dots, you know, they're gonna gonna appear when Peter actually hit the kick, yeah. not 10 milliseconds later. And when you're doing really fast shit, you're, you're turning shit into shuffle, you know? Right. And um, they, they got it. They didn't care, but I was super insecure because it's like, here's one of my hero bands, Merciless, coming to record and I am, you know, having a fucking computer here. So how does it work? You know? So while me, I was there alone trying to mess shit and then Dread shows up. Hey, what's up? Where's Merciless? I want to get drunk with them. And I'm, they're not here yet. They're probably somewhere on the way. They, you know, there were no phones, nothing. Nobody called and said, right. hey, we're four hours late or whatever. So it was just me and Dredd. It's like, oh, what do we do then? Ah, I need to make sure this shit is working here. So maybe we, we we record some shit like we used to do in the good old times when when we would form a band, you know, like we did with Edge of Sanity or yeah. Smeege Hook and the Yanglish or whatever bands we formed and forgot about it. Yeah. It was hundred not so much, but a few <laughs> others. So we started recording. Let's make a song that sounds like uh, Merciless uh, or Creator or whatever, like really thrashy, like two beat. Yeah, cool. So I made a few riffs and I programmed the drums using the kind of sounds and setups I, I would maybe use for Merciless. Okay. And we wrote a song called Dead Earth, which is on the Satanic Serenades uh-huh. compilation as bonus. And that's pretty much a kind of a boring thrash metal song with way too much noodly noodly solo shit. But, you know, <laughs> it was just for fun. And then it's like, okay, that was fun. What do we do now? Uh, let's do a D-side song. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. And I was like, bum, 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 blah, 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 and then say, ah, ha, ha, this is so D-side ripoff. This is the funniest thing we ever did. And what are we going to call it? Yeah, burn me without the Christ or whatever. Okay, cool. Let's record it. And we did. And we were just kind of finishing it. And I mixed it. And, oh, the computer is working great with the analog machine. Oh, blah, blah. And then, boom, Merciless shows up. And all is, you know, it's all just happening. And then... I had these uh, two songs on a on a DAT tape. You go, maybe not everyone knows, but a DAT tape. It was kind of a cassette version of the CD right. that you used to mix down shit in the in the nineties. And um, somehow, someone got a hold of "Burn Me." I played it to someone who played it to someone. Might have been uh, Devo from Marduk. Oh, okay. Devo was an Overflash, and I produced and fixed and tricks an album with him, and that was kind of down his road, you know, a little bit more American death metal with lots of fast kicks and everything programmed and perfect. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there's an A&R guy from a pretty big record company. The, the guys had actually bought no fashion 
you know, there was a label that bought no fashion. Then there was a label who bought the label who bought no fashion. <laughs> okay. Okay. Evan Beer, you know? <laughs> it's like one of the bigger indies in Sweden. One of them called me. Uh, he was a, a British guy. So I think he spoke English to me, John or whatever his name was. I heard uh, a song uh, where you sing, say done. I think it's super cool. I need you to be on this compilation we're doing. And I'm like, you, you, you heard what? You, what? What's going on? Here? Yeah, you sing Satan all the time. And I, uh, sure, it's not like any. And then, fuck, he heard Burn Me. But that's like a ripoff of a D side song I wanted to say, but I didn't. Because there is a song on the first D side album, which is this, you know? Yeah. yeah it's yeah. all the pun. Satan. Yeah. And we were just like, fuck, this is so funny. And all of a sudden, I'm on a compilation with Catatonia and some other really, really good bands. And there is Infested, Burn Me. And everyone's like, we're going to make a cover version of that song. It's so fucking brutal. But uh, it's a D-side ripoff, you know? We, yeah? What's going on here? You don't get it? That That's a song from the first D-side album. We just ripped that shit off. Uh, uh, no, it's cool when you sing, say, done. So, okay, fuck. All right. <laughs> and fast forward, you know, it was like, it was cool. You, you, we even signed, I saw it the other week, a publishing deal for that song with that big-ass label because that's what you did in the big world. You oh, know? wow. And um, yeah, and then this German label called Invasion, yeah, uh, they were really into my stuff and kept. Um, they sent bands to my studio that I recorded. I did fermenting in arts. I did golem, and uh, lots of lots of stuff. And one day the, the guys just show up. I want you to make an infested album for my label. I'm like, okay, why not? How much do you offer? It's like. Maybe we start with like a mini album, blah, blah, and you will get this and that much Deutschmarks or whatever. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm running a studio here. Someone is paying me to have fun and do death metal because at the time we were doing the mini album, I was not really doing US style death metal at all because yeah. Edge of Sanity was coming, was around the time of Crimson and right. this and that, you know? Right. So, so it's like, fucking hell, that's so cool. So we, we wrote... Um, like three songs. I don't know if you, um, fucked by Satan, you cannot really count because it's, it's pretty short. Yeah. But it's, the other stuff was pretty serious and I get to do the riffing and of course do the programming of the drums uh -huh. uh, to be a bit in this uh, Once Upon the Cross kind of vibe. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And it was just like, super, we need a full-length album. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, <laughs> come on. You know? So I was actually uh, talking to um, it's a guy called Magnus Lawn. He, had, he is he's a manager for many pretty big bands, but he was also in 59 Times to Pain back in the day, some kind of crossover hardcore band. Okay. And he told me, I remember you were doing death metal on your lunch breaks. What the fuck were you doing then? You know, it's like, <laughs> I did? Really? Yeah, you took your little weird digital machine and you went into this room there and then you spent one hour <laughs> recording a death metal album and then you came back out and recorded our shit and i'm like oh i did okay i don't remember that at all but <laughs> apparently that's how i wrote hell fuck you know oh interesting just like wrote riffs on this uh, roland machine which you where you could do the magic of cut copy paste audio okay like, oh i think i got one good take of both guitars copy paste 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 <laughs> let's write another riff you know da, 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 da. all to the all to the click track and then program the drums and that thing and no song could be over two minutes that was the rule of hellfuck so there's a shitload of songs on that one and then i thought well let this be over finally because dread lost his voice and we didn't even finish all the songs there are still like five six songs without vocals somewhere on an ada tape oh wow somewhere yeah, and that then it was silent for a bit, and then Invasion came back again. We need a new Infested record, you know. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> and at the same time, my boss at the, I mean, I'd even stopped recording. You know, that was the thing. I think it was '98 or something like that. Uh -huh. I was working full time in a music store, and he, my boss, had told me, here's this new thing. It's called an Apple computer, and you can record audio in this thing. And I need you to find out how the fuck it works, so you can show the customers and we can sell it i'm like i'm gonna record in a computer i mean it's one thing to do midi in an atari yeah. and then use actual audio gear for the rest but record in a beige g3 computer <laughs> with like one gigabyte hard drive or whatever okie dokie let's try that shit out so i said what i do then and this was just at the same time 
Maya from Invasion asked me to do another Infested album. And I was like, fuck, that's cool. Let's just do that. And I can do it like in lunch breaks and after work. And I get <laughs> to learn how to record an album yeah. and use like uh, MIDI modules. But I recorded all the guitars and the bass and the vocals all straight into Cubase in an old beige G3. And I mixed it all in the box in like 1999. Crazy. And that's when I was like, whoa, this shit really works, you know, <laughs> except the part that I deleted the whole album oh. and had to pay 500 euros to get it back. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I didn't man. know much about how to to you know file management and backup. I was pretty <laughs> okay. bad. At that Let's just call it uh, a moment of panic, <laughs> uh, where it's like, where are all the files? Uh, empty the trash can. <laughs> oh, yes. Conk. Oh, wow. Conk. But anyway, uh, that album came out, and that was it. That was the end of Infested. You know, it was okay. was a, yeah because I felt also that it had. Um, Taking a turn was a little bit too corporate for me. You know, uh, I, even I have limits. Right. But it was great fun. And But it was always like at the end of it, it was like, oh, I have to get this done. I have a day job. It's all uh, chaos. And um, But I heard years and years later that we inspired some pretty big bands. Yeah. Yeah, you guys invented that fucking groovy death metal, man, which is like like groovy. And I'm, I thought I was playing new metal <laughs> on the seventh <laughs> string, you know? <laughs> but and Dread was going through a rap phase. He was playing in some kind of rap metal band. And I was I was playing what I thought was new metal, but I had a seven string. And they have a special sound about them in the early times uh, that you couldn't just get of a six string. I don't yeah. know what, but all of it was like, da 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 that's super groovy, you know, and uh, that's not death metal, is it? I don't know, right, but right. it came out and it worked and I got a shitload of money for it and that was it. <laughs> that was the best that until, of course, uh, Century Media bought the rights for all the stuff and I finally got to remaster it to, to make it sound like it should have sounded all along yeah. with an actual decent production. Uh, so I actually enjoy the Satanic Serenades. I think it's it's a it's a super collection of uh, some of my best metal riffs are on that shit. Nice. When you, when you consider it really like really good meaty American death metal riffs, there are right. some really some really cool shit there. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and 